Welcome to Mind Over Matter, where we feature young Jamaicans who are shooting for the stars. I'm your host, Margaret Boyne. My guest is a first-year student at the University of the West Indies, pursuing a degree in biomedical engineering. She's also a member of the national badminton team. She's a past student of the Immaculate Conception High School, where she excelled academically. We will delve into Brianna's journey, gain insights from her experiences, and discover the strategies she has employed to succeed academically while participating in high-level sports. My guest is Brianna Biznot. Welcome to Mind Over Matter, Brianna. Thank it's you. A pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, looking forward to talking to you. Yes. Um, as I said in my intro, you're presently pursuing a degree in biomedical engineering at the University of the West Indies. You're a member of the badminton, national badminton team. But let's start by discussing your journey as a high achiever at Immaculate Conception High, high School. So 14 grade ones in both CSEC and CAPE. Her, how were you able to maintain such a high academic performance while being a member of the national badminton team? Well, it's a question I guess a lot, mm -hmm. but the key role or the key part that played in it is time management and being disciplined in that time management and knowing that if you allocate time for work, then it's time for work and time for training is time for training because both are equally as important because it's difficult to have one without the other because if you're overworking yourself constantly, then it's you're gonna get burnt out eventually. And you can't be constantly training without the schoolwork because then the schoolwork is going to drop. So, mm -hmm. so you got you got passes in physics, um in the sciences. Um tell me some of the subjects. Um I'm remembering physics and math, but you can give me a few more. So in like I did English A, English B, math, add math, Spanish, mm, physics, chemistry, and bio. Okay. Oh, and information technology. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. You have a love for the sciences? Yeah, I do. No. I have a love particularly for math, mm -hmm. which is why I decided to go with engineering because, and specifically biomedical engineering, because I figured it would have been that bridge between the sciences and math that I do like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But t tell us a little about biomedical engineering, though, for those who probably um, might not be sure what it is. Yes. So biomedical engineering is a mixture of electronics engineering, but applying it to medical use. So, for example, electronics engineering has to do with circuits and those kind of components and just basic electrical wiring, maybe in your house, the power, that kind of stuff. And then what you do in biomedical engineering is applied to medical use. So for example, the ventilators at the hospital, your pacemakers in your heart, just making equipment that will help people in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really like um, an integration of math, um, tech, and healthcare, would you yeah. say? Let's talk a little about um, Immaculate a little, because you, you, you excel not only academically, but you, you were involved in a lot of things there. Tell us a little yeah. about that. So at Immaculate, I held multiple positions coming up, but when I left, I was student council president. I was also president of the Engineering Society, and I held a position on the exec for ISCF, that's the Interschool Christian Fellowship. Um, can't remember off the top of my head right now. Anything <laughs> yes. But those are the major ones. So um, what role would you say that, um, that Immaculate played in your overall growth um, and development? I would say it played a major role. If I had to go back and choose which high school that I would go to, I would continue to choose Immaculate again. <laughs> I believe the school does play an a fundamental role in coming up and one thing that I do like about Immaculate is that they encourage balance so mm -hmm. even though they are very strenuous on the academics there is a designated activity period every week where every student must join a club and it's from that 
period during the week that you basically find your own footing in whichever club you like and you put yourself out there and they encourage you to do these outside activities and extracurriculars. And personally, I believe it really does play a role because academics are very important. But the extracurricular activities that they force, well, not force, but encourage us <laughs> to partake in, it yes. also encourages a lot of character development. Mm. And it also helps, you know, it also helps us in our academics as well. Because mm. in these extracurriculars, you learn certain factors and certain qualities determination, discipline, and as a result, it also helps you in your schoolwork. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk a little about badminton because I I used to play back in the day, you know, but way back in the day. <laughs> so I have a little knowledge and a little love of badminton. So when did you actually start playing? So I played for, well, I was exposed to it for about a year in prep school. And mm-hmm. then when I came to Immaculate I was reintroduced to the club and that's when I really started to pick it up so about grade seven. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been playing for um, Jamaica? Uh, For Jamaica I would say officially I began to represent Jamaica in 2018 because that was the first time I had gone anywhere on behalf of Jamaica that was when I went to a China and Jamaica training program Mm-hmm. So the program was in China, but it was like a collaboration between the two countries. And so myself and a team of Jamaicans, we went to China for that training camp. Mm, okay. So um, are you a singles, doubles, or, or mixed player? Um, what do you play? Well, I technically play all of them, but mm-hmm. I personally draw a liking to doubles, in particular mixed doubles. When you made the, the, the team for the first time, give me a little, what was that like to you? It was an extreme honor <laughs> because <laughs> now it might not seem as something great because I've been playing for a while. But at the moment when I was given the opportunity, I was extremely elated. It was the biggest thing ever in my mind because I had never done anything like that before. Growing up, I had always been involved in sports. I did swimming, gymnastics, I did dancing, but I had never gone to a level where I would be able to represent my country. Mm -hmm. And so the first time when I, you know, got the memo that I was being invited to to the training camp, granted, that first time I was probably one of the, I don't want to say worst, but I was on the bottom of the list. (laughs) So it was an extreme honor for me to even be chosen. And so I was very grateful for the opportunity. And since then, I have just made sure to, you know, mm-hmm. cross my teeth, dot my eyes, and continue on that path. Okay. So what are some of the most memorable experiences you had representing Jamaica, would you say? The most memorable? I would say one of them would have to be the trip to China because mm-hmm. I learned a lot from the Chinese coaches. And I also learned that certain attributes that they have that we might not have in our training. So mm-hmm. one thing for them is that they are a stickler for time. Mm-hmm. So at the training camp, our hotel was very in very close proximity to the hall. So it's like a five minute walk away. So every morning we would walk to the training hall and back. And it was our responsibility to wake up, get ourselves there on time, and so if you are late, that was a very big thing because they are a stickler for time. And mm. if they say that, for example, training is at nine o'clock in the morning, they don't mean you're supposed to be walking in at night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they want you to be there and they want you to be standing up on the court waiting for the coach at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. So it's being in that experience. And at the time I was very young as well. It was in 2018. So I was um, 14, 15, <laughs> and it was okay. my first time being away from my parents and for so long because it was two months mm-hmm. and at that age to you know go and I wasn't living by myself, but I didn't have my parents and my usual family that I do live with. Mm-hmm. And so it was a big experience for me. And they, the coaches, and just the experience, the Chinese themselves, they taught me a lot about you know 
the mindset that I should have towards mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. What what other countries have you gone to? Uh, none, no other ones at the moment. Oh, okay, Just, okay, right now. Mm -hmm. So, so as a player, um, you're you're in high school. What were some of the challenges that you that you experienced, um, playing um for the Jamaican team? A big thing was time, because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of time and dedication to be a national athlete to actually be committed to the sport and be committed to your development, because it's very similar to school it's basically like you're doing another school because mm -hmm. you're teaching yourself or you're learning a whole other skill mm -hmm. so it's almost like you want to put the exact same effort that you are putting into school into badminton if you expect similar results because mm -hmm. you can't be putting all this work into school and getting the results and then expecting to put half of it into badminton for example and getting the same results mm -hmm. so i would say that that ha was the most difficult thing for me to find the time for any everything and to balance it. Mm -hmm. It does come with a lot of sacrifice. But yeah. when the important thing is the love for it and the love for what you're doing. Because mm -hmm. once you love what you're doing and you want what you're doing, then it becomes easier to work out. Mm -hmm. So how has how has playing a sport um shaped your life? It has been very integral into my life because it has taught me many things that I have applied to my degree, applied to school, applied to just life overall. It has, like I said earlier, it taught me that it has taught me discipline mm -hmm. very much that to know that when it's time for something, it is time for something or when I need to give this much of myself into something. Like if I know that I have a goal that I need to work towards, like, for example, if I have a test coming up, I know that if I want to get an X amount on the test, I have to put in an X amount of work and it's not gonna come without that work. Another thing it has taught me is the value of patience <laughs> because it can be very frustrating when mm -hmm. you feel like, for example, I have been playing from, like I said, I've been exposed to it from grades of it. And so it's been seven, eight years mm -hmm. and it can be very frustrating because it's like you're playing for all these amounts of years why am I not able to do this properly yet? Like, but it has taught me to give yourself patience and mm -hmm. to give yourself some grace and not to be so hard on yourself mm -hmm. because the truth is in time it will come. Mm -hmm. And I also have to acknowledge sometimes that I am balancing a lot right now in terms of balancing my biomedical engineering degree and trying to be a full-time national athlete at the same time. So it has taught me to give myself grace and to not beat up myself so much if I don't meet a particular goal that I want to. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever had an injury, you know, that prevented you from playing? Fortunately, I have never had any major injuries like that. I have hurt myself a few times, but nothing major. Mm -hmm. uh, I, up to this day, I still have some problem with my foot bottoms. <laughs> Oh. So sometimes on the court, they'll begin hurting me, but it's something that I learned to deal with. Mm -hmm. But Brianna, um, playing a sport, how difficult is it though to play, to be playing against top players like, you know, from as China, as you say, I don't know if you have played against, um, you know, some from Malaysia. I mean, those persons are paid you know, that's yeah. their job that that is their morning to night they are doing um playing badminton. What is it like? How difficult is it to compete? I mean, you are not being paid anything, you have to go into school. Yeah. It's very difficult. And I think that is one of the setbacks of mm -hmm. our country where we probably are not able to put as much into it because like I said, I have to be about like it's not necessarily a choice for me mm -hmm. to be balancing my degree while I'm doing the sport because if it were up to me I'd probably just be playing the sport alone if it was mm -hmm. if it could be a proper source of income in this in our country Jamaica but the realistic part is that we are not paid as mm -hmm. as, as badminton athletes so it forces us to have to 
go to school while we train or to do work while we train because there, realistically we have to sustain ourselves other countries like you said like china malaysia since i went to china firsthand i could tell you that they eat sleep and breathe by on from they are young so it's like their parents make a decision from when they are very young and they enroll them in a school school because their school over there if you are going to pursue a sport it is mostly the sport and then the school is on the side basically mm-hmm. you know how after you leave school yes. in the day and then you go to training in the afternoon for them it's like you go to training and then you go to school for the day. yeah <laughs> And because they are being trained from so young and coming up in the system, by the time they get to like, for example, my age or even like their peak ages at 25, 26, they are way ahead of the game. But what about financial support for for um for badminton? I mean, do you have sponsors? Oh, does that work? So we do have sponsors, local sponsors for the sport, which we are very grateful for and do help us. Mm-hmm. But we it's don't not have a, yeah it's not mm-hmm. enough because badminton is a very expensive sport mm-hmm. the rackets the gears down to the shuttles the shuttles are very expensive mm-hmm. and because of that it is sometimes very hard to get enough funding to fund us to go to these trips because not only are the gears expensive but then for traveling the most dominant countries in our sport are like on the other side of the world mm-hmm. and you can imagine that would be a lot of money you know what, um, Yui, what is your training routine like? So currently, since I've been at university, I do court training on Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And then we would do physical training on Saturday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm on summer break, we're going to be training a lot more frequently. But that was the training schedule that I was keeping up mm-hmm. as, while I was in the semester biomedical engineering no um i love to see women in stem you know um you're breaking barriers in a male dominated field how you how you feel about that it feels very empowering <laughs> mm-hmm. because it is something that i try to remind myself that it's not necessarily that i'm trying to prove myself to anybody but while i'm there it's very satisfying to know that I am helping overcome a stigma Mm. and that me, I'm playing my role in encourage or changing the mindset for people that this is not a field for women or this is not something that women typically do. Mm. But how do we go about though, um, Brianna, encouraging our girls in high school to pursue, you know, STEM? What, what what can we do? Because there seems to be like a resistance to, to science subjects. That's a very good point. Personally, since coming from Immaculate, I don't think I experienced that as much because of the environment that they create. And because mm-hmm. of that, I would probably say that it's very important to create a comfortable environment for anyone that, or not anyone that wants to do STEM in per se, but just to make the environment comfortable enough so someone feels okay to say, if I want to go this route, this is completely fine to go this route. Because mm. personally, since I went to an all girls school, I never really experienced any competition with males. In, so mm. it was the norm for me to be in a class of women. And it was just the norm for me to be surrounded by women doing what I do. It's half and half for me because sometimes I will go into a space and think, you know, I'm like one of two women in this room right now. Mm-hmm. And I do hope that sometime in the future it, that will change where one will go into a room and say, you know, it or it doesn't stand out to them that they are one of two women in the room. Because it, I think probably because why I'm also used to it is because in badminton, it's a male dominated sport and coming up. I have been one of few women to be in this work in the hall. So sometimes mm-hmm. even I will go into a hall on a training day and I'm the only woman in the whole, in the whole hall. 
like mm -hmm. in, in my group and also in the other groups I'm literally the only female in the room so it's coming into engineering mm -hmm. I noticed it but it never really bothered me as yeah. much because it's something that I've been used to I mm -hmm. coming up all those years being surrounded by mm -hmm. males in the field it has given me a sense of like I'm not frightened by them or I'm not intimidated mm -hmm. by them and I'm very thankful for that because I don't feel intimidated to maybe not say what I want to say I'm very you know I, I say what <laughs> I want to say when I want to say of mm -hmm. course very respectful but it's something that I've learned to mm -hmm. guide myself a lot yeah all right um, can you share any strategies, though, that have helped you succeed both on and off the badminton court? I would say listen to yourself. So if you feel like you are being overworked or if you feel like it's just too much to handle, because sometimes you will be doing the same thing that you've been doing for the whole year or for the whole month. Like you go through a whole month with the same schedule and it's fine. But then suddenly one week is just so much harder to do this one schedule. You probably need a break from something. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to take the break because the truth is one week is not going to take down five years of training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and similarly for school as well, if you feel like you're studying, 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 two days, a, a two day break from studying is not going to make you forget everything that you've learned for the whole semester. <laughs> and so I would say to listen to yourself. Because even though balance is important, if you realize that one part is kind of you know, like if the scale is like this and this is balanced mm -hmm. and it's a bit too much right now, it's okay to, you know, lighten it back up. Because mm -hmm. I find that for me personally, training during the week is at some very brief last time, if you ask me. <laughs> it's like at 8 to 10 p.m. And on a Friday, it's like... Um, three hours and then on a Sunday too is or training times are in the night and that's something mm -hmm. that Jamaicans just have to work with in badminton because like I said most of us go to school and go to work mm -hmm. so we all have to train in the night but that in itself can be very taxing on us because it's like when we finish training at 10 o'clock in the night by the time we get home and shower and everything it's time to go to bed for the next morning because we still have to wake up and go to school or work the next day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, sometimes it can get very tiring mm -hmm. because you might want some more sleep. Something is, you just need a break. Mm -hmm. And so I would say something that I would encourage is to just listen to yourself and to take that break when you need it. Mm -hmm. So is, is university living up to your expectations You're in your first year? It's, it's a lot more than I had expected. Oh. I, because coming from a school like at Immaculate, it was a very competitive school. And so mentally, I already said that, you know, I've been in a competitive competitive environment my whole life. I, this shouldn't be too bad. Mm -hmm. But university, it's a whole other ball game. It oh. is completely different. It humbles you very much. <laughs> and it's you that... If you thought you're putting in a lot of work, there is a lot more to be put in. Like the work that I was putting in, I was putting in a lot of work as immaculate, but the amount that university requires of me is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a lot more. <laughs> so what advice do you want to, 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 to leave for our um, other students in first year who, who are probably struggling to balance everything, you know, all the I workload? Yeah, I would definitely say, first of all, find something that you enjoy doing and that will help you with the stress because mm -hmm. university is going to stress you out and you need something that you can use to balance your time and balance your mental health. Mm -hmm. I would also say to find somebody in a higher year group that is willing to guide you and is willing to answer your questions because it is needed. A lot of the time... I coming into first year a lot of people did not know what they were doing like they give you information but of course going into a new space is always a shocker and so it was a very integral part to ask people questions and to get the answers because it will make your experience a lot easier because they've already experienced it 
So they know the best route to kind of guide you to go there. Why it was kind of difficult for my year group is because our year group was the first year group to come back in person since COVID. And so even the second years and the third years, it was their first year in at the actual school. Mm -hmm. And because of that, for the first semester, everything was kind of all over the place. Nobody knew what they were doing. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, as time progressed, we all kind of got our footing. It's still a kind of shaky, but I can guarantee you going into second year that my friends and I, we mentally have an idea of how we'd want to approach the next year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, tell me a little about your family before you leave. Tell me a little about your mother. Yeah, I mean, it's Mother's Day. I don't know. <laughs> yes. So my mother, she has two children, myself and my brother. And she's a very dedicated mother. She's always been behind us. She is very, she prioritizes academics a lot which is very important. And she also prioritizes the balance. So for example, I have, like I said, I've been in sports my whole life. And so has my brother, he plays football. He does get a track meet yesterday. He does does swimming because as much as she prioritizes the academic and she prioritizes it, you know, Mm -hmm. she does also know the importance of the extracurricular. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you don't really see the importance of things until you maybe grow up and get to understand why she's doing certain things mm-hmm. but once you you come to be very grateful for it because it's like coming up I don't know what I would have done if I wasn't involved in sports because mm-hmm. like I said it has shaped me into the person that I am I'm also very grateful for her because she can see things before it even happens like if something is happening I don't know it's very random <laughs> but if I yes. I'm, like, I'm going to do something <laughs> she'll tell me okay you know just be cautious of this yeah. and it's like when you actually go there you'd be like hmm you know <laughs> mother's um, instincts I guess yeah. <laughs> and my father he plays a very integral role in my sport because he has always backed me in the sport he's a bit more um involved in regards to the actual sport and my training and my coach he's like my mini ma- mini manager basically okay. so I have he has three children myself and my two sisters and they're also very involved in the sport not badminton but in sports overall and they do play badminton it's very fun <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. to play with them and so for example last year or not sure how long the period was but he sat as first vice president on the Jamaica Badminton Association. And, you know, he played an integral role in helping the council conduct their events. And he's just been a very integral role in my development as a player, because like I said, he's like a mini manager for me. And he also sees certain things that maybe I might need to work on in my training. And he makes plans with my coach. And it's very good to have the extra help. Because when you're balancing, as the athlete, when you're balancing like school and the sport, it can be very hard to be micromanaging them both at the same time Mm -hmm. because it is difficult to like kind of be fine, like combing up my game with a fine tooth comb when I'm focusing on so many other things. And they also, both my coach and my father are able to pinpoint things that I might need to work on that I might not even see myself Mm -hmm. and so because of that I am very grateful for them to constantly be basically pushing me and helping me grow they're very integral parts of my training and just my development as a person okay so you have very supportive parents so Brianna it was great talking to you um I really enjoyed this interview and um I'm looking forward to your contribution to the country in your bio in the biomedical field. Uh, thank you very and much. All the best. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me. Your all podcast right. is a very great initiative and I love watching your episodes. Uh-huh.